fights with monsters and look to it that he himself does not become a monster. When you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. A quote from Freddy's Nurse Nice Nietzsche. It's Baldur's Gate. Enhanced edition. We got the classic cinematics. Look at this freaking guy. <laughs> I will be the last, and you will go first. <sighs> How big are this guy's balls? Dude, he is breathing. He is breathing. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Baldur's Gate. Oh, Baldur's Gate. Enhanced edition. <laughs> Was this like the first time that's ever been done? Where the blood pools and spills into like the title or something like that surely there must have been like a tv show that did that before here we go it yeah it's baldur's gate the enhanced edition though we've only got one mod and that is for the classic cinematics we'll be playing on core rules as the title suggests i already did the tutorial and i've adjusted the options ever so slightly if you're interested in seeing me do the tutorial i did record it it was actually the very first thing that I recorded. But uh, you'll have to forgive me if I repeat myself, things in between these videos and all that. But nonetheless, it's a unlisted video that you'll find in the description if you want to get into that. Anyway, let's go here with single player. You can play this entirely multiplayer. And I was considering doing as much, but it's like impossible to schedule stuff, right? The scheduling for when these videos would come out would become immensely irregular right already the first few we're going to have be fairly short especially while we're still playing through cyberpunk 2077 and all that right but expect their like runtime to increase over time right anyway single player and i've already pre-generated a character i'm super duper unfamiliar with baldur's gate the first ones i've played Dark Alliance on the DS, I think it was? Or maybe it was the GBA. I played the, the handheld version of Dark Alliance and I'm vaguely familiar with like Dungeons and Dragons. I'm super unfamiliar with like the rule set and all that. So, which is why we're not on like whatever the high, the super highest difficulty is. So like ultra ball run. Core rules is somewhere in the middle. I think it might be directly in the middle. I think it's closest to how the game was initially, I think, way back when. Anyway, there's some new content added thanks to the Enhanced Edition, and we're tooling around with some of it, all that stuff. You'll have to forgive me for being a fool, just a right damn fool with all of the stuff. <laughs> It'll be This'll be mostly like a, a cool way of looking back at where a lot of games came from, right? So many games drew inspiration and built off the back of Baldur's Gate. It's pretty amazing. All the Infinity Engine games, they're like super seminal classics. Anyway, let's go. New game, and I can just import here. If you want to see me like go through and mock create a character, if you want to see all that, like I said, that's in the tutorial stuff. Let's import here, character file, good. And there's pre-made characters, but then, I made this character down here. I looked up some stuff about like, what's a good beginner character if I don't understand a lot of the jargon that this game is going to use, right? Because obviously we've had like years, literal decades 
of iteration and just continual improvement, some maybe not improvement, over all this stuff present in this game, right? And I'm su this is super before my time, right? <laughs> so anyone super familiar with this, please, I beg for your forgiveness. <laughs> we're going with a berserker, right? This is what we're doing down here. Boom. And I've already gotten like a fairly decent roll. I think I got somewhere like lower 90s, right? I know you can roll up to like a hundo or something like that. I think that might be possible, but I didn't want to stand around rolling nonstop and all that, right? Anyway, let's see. What all else do we have to do? Appearance. Oh, look. Okay. Yeah, that looks fine. Or can we change our hair color? Let's see. Can we go like a dark black or something? I think we were already on like the darkest black. We're probably going to wear a helmet anyhow, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. We look kind of like our portrait, right? I think you can... Can you change your clothing color and stuff in-game? I'd assume so, right? Like, modern versions. Modern takes on this sort of Infinity Engine game. Like, we've played Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, which are directly inspired by all this. It'll be shocking how similar you'll see all sorts of mechanics and all that. Anyway, there we go. And we have a voice thing. Should we just go with, like, one of these basic ones? Or will die. Let's Your see. life shall be mine. I deserve to be leader. Some of these sound Who's too... in for it now? Now you're going to be sorry. I've always been leadership material. Go, go, go! Everybody listen to me now. I'm kind of down with that. I previewed them ahead of time, but I've totally forgotten. <laughs> Let's see. Biography. Did I write up a biography? Oh, that's perfect. Let's see, this is our default one. Like, I don't know any of the lore of AD&D or D&D or anything like that, or the Sword Coast, any of this stuff. I don't know anything. This is completely like first playthrough, first first of everything. Okay, we may as well get our biography, right? Drawn to the clamor of the forge at an early age, you have become quite, quite skilled working for the monks of the keep and have kept them supplied with whatever tools are occasionally required. Inspired by your foster father's tales of ironclad heroes, however, you know you would much rather swing a blade than a smithy's hammer. One of the Watchers has been kind enough to take you under her wing, and has trained you in the basics of the deadly arts. You yearn to leave the safe walls of your library home and venture forth along the trade way a trusty weapon at your side. You know little of how you came to be a ward of Gorians, but who? But over the years, you have gleaned something of your mother's tale from his... What? Who? Of, oh, Gorian. Okay. From his vague illusions and from the words he sometimes uttered in tear-filled sleep. She was an orcish caravan guard, part of a larger mercenary company that operated out of water deep. Through the course of his adventuring career, Gorion grew to become her close friend. As you have no memory of her, nor any keepsakes to remind you of her existence, you have come to believe that she died while giving birth to you. Perhaps it was the pain of such a parting that led Gorion to cloister himself within the narrow halls of Candle Keep and raise you as his own. Of your father, you have learned nothing. Oh, does this come up in the game? No. This is just fla this is just flavor, right? This isn't actually going to have impact, is it? I know Candle Keep is like a place in the game for sure. I'm sure all of these are, right? Okay, done. Let's see. Name. Seems good to me. There we are. And accept. There we are. And we're going with core rules. This setting is aimed at veteran players who are well-versed in AD&D mechanics. Enemies deal full damage, party members can permanently die, and spells aren't guaranteed to be copied to spell books. Now I checked, and people did recommend that this is totally a fine thing for new players, right? I checked several posts online and all that, and people said, yeah, core rules is fine if you're new, and you want a bit of a challenge and all that, right? 
So fingers crossed, this is a good idea. Worst case, if I'm too dumb to be able to play this game, we can just turn it down, <laughs> right? We can just, we can just turn it down a bit. Anyway, let's venture forth. <gasps> Baldur's Gate, one. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your twenty years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters. Lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold. That of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, <laughs> Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever, and now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, he has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. So we're fairly young, right? Despite the fact that you can pick portraits that are like older folks. Huh. Okay. Oh. Done. Welcome to Candlekeep. Your, uh, your home. As you move around the keep, you will find green-robed monks. Your character should walk over and talk with them. Many important messages will be given to you through the text window on the bottom of the screen. To expand and contract this window, simply drag the top to the desired height. Journal update, find Gorion. Got 150 big ones. Now look, journal update. Can I click on this? Gor Gorion... My foster father has informed me that we must immediately leave Candlekeep and set out on a journey. He has given me some gold, and I must purchase supplies for the road, including weapons and armor. Prologue. Okay. Sure. And of course, as always, we'll be adjusting our audio and all of that as we're going. I did a little bit in our opening bit, but you know how it is. Okay. Tutor. I've got right. this. These are the green robe monks, right? Sure. Hey, dude. Oh, God. Here, let's toggle that on. Hello, child. Shall we continue your lessons? Oh, this guy's really soft spoken. Okay, I thought I, I really got it pretty close to being nailed in the tutorial. I guess not. Okay. Hello, child. I've been instructed to tell you all about basic mechanics of movement and time. Wow, that's a lot. How to move and time. <laughs> that is quite the uh, the gamut. If there is anything in that sort you would know more if there is anything in that sort you would know more of. Tell me about combat rounds. That's like the only thing that I didn't learn in the tutorial. Combat flows in a series of rounds. Every creature on the battlefield exists in its own initiative round. This means that as you move and attack, your enemies are moving and attacking at the same time. Weapons with lower speed factors and spells with lower casting times can greatly improve your chances of survival. Though you can cast only one spell at a time, no matter how quickly you cast it. Can I tell you anything else about the mechanics of time and movement? <laughs> so funny to me. All right, nothing now. I'll be moving on. Thanks, Tudor. 
Very well. Return to me if you wish to continue your lessons. Oh, cool. Okay. Let's change audio around a bit here. Let's see. Sound. Look at that. Pump it all the way up, I guess? There may be some issues with audio balancing, maybe, now that I think of it. Okay. What do you need? All right. Let's Don't see. worry about me. Where should we go? Should we go speak with this person up here? Are we timed? Are we ever timed at any point in this game? I don't know. I guess, are we ever timed in this game? And the game doesn't tell me. That's what I'm wondering. Because I'm fine if they're being a t of, with there being a timer if the game is like, yeah, you're being timed right now. <laughs> you need to do this quickly. All right. Felidia. Hello there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, hello. Have you, s hey, have you seen my copy of the history of Halua anywhere? You know how I can't stand the constant shuffling of arthritic feet up in the library. So I thought I'd get a bit of fresh air and just east of here. And, oh, I hate being so absent-minded. Please, if you find it, I really do need it back. Okay. Journal updated. For Lydia's book. Okay. Dear absent-minded Felidia has lost another of her books, The History of Halrua. This time, or this time, last, t last time she was at Candle Keep, she lost an entire four-volume set in the hay we keep for the cows. Oh, is that our hint? Oh, whoops. There we go. Over here, Tudor. Hello, child. Shall we continue your lessons? <laughs> Hello, child. I'm here to teach you about the circles on the ground around everyone's feet. Is there a color you'd like explained? I know all I need to know about feet. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, blue? Tell me about blue. I, I, I think I know about green. What's blue? A character with a blue circle around their feet is neither friendly nor hostile. You can freely initiate dialogue by selecting them. If that character has anything interesting to say, a dialogue window will appear. You may also be prompted to reply, so choose your response wisely. Is there any other colored circle you would like to know about? How about... I'm pretty sure we know what green and red are going to be. How about yellow? A yellow circle indicates a character out of control. <laughs> the most common reason for this is fear. Oh, it really does mean... Okay, okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> that was right. That was the right way to read that. Well, this is fear or morale failure. These characters will avoid battle at all costs often running to a remote area of the map. This circle also appears when some characters become enraged. Berserkers, for instance, have been known to lose control in the heat of battle, turning on their own allies. Uh-oh, that's me. I'm a berserker. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Let's see, this was a recommended class as well. These people recommended this for noob newbies, people unfamiliar with, like, the jargon and the systems and all that. All right, purple. A purple circle appears around your character's feet if they are inaccessible, usually for the purposes of a cutscene or a similar event, where you are unable to use your full party. Is there any other colored circle you would like to... I know everything about feet. Thank you. It is not the feet but the aura surrounding them that is important. Return to me if you change your mind and wish to continue your lessons. I'm assuming we're not missing out on any, like, bonus amazing stuff by exhausting every single tidbit of dialogue here, right? Yeah, look at these fucking cows, huh? Can I talk to them? Hey. No. Okay. Sure. Another tutor. Man, I thought we already did the tutorial. Child, shall we continue your lessons? They all sound the same. They're like clones or something. Clones of Garion. 
Orion asked me to teach you about your inventory, as well as customizing your character and gaining levels. Tell me about customization. On the character record, select Customize to access advanced options pertaining to your character's portrait, color scheme, sound set, and combat script. Of these, perhaps the most directly relevant is your combat script. Choose the actions you wish the computer to make on your behalf when your character has no other commands. Every character's script is different, so you can customize a unique party strategy that suits your playstyle. Okay. Tell me about leveling up? When you gain enough experience points, a plus symbol, addition symbol, appears on the corner of your character's portrait indicating that you can level up. To do so, press the Level Up button on the character record screen. Leveling up may yield additional proficiency points, thieving skill points, spell slots, or other abilities, depending on your class. Each level also grants additional hit points, making it easier to survive the world's dangers. Is there anything else you'd like to know? I know everything I need for now. Thanks. Should you change your mind, feel free to ask. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's how he sounds. All right. Let's go over to this thing, right? Look, I learned how to quick save during the tutorial. Look at that. Fancy. Okay. What's this? Candle keep in. How do I progress ahead? Whoops. Because I don't want to do that. Leave candle keep. Okay. Whoops. So let's go into the inn. Oh, I gotta double click on it. Er, what? Okay, there we go. Look at that. See, that that is exactly how new I am to this. <laughs> that, that tripped me up. <laughs> oh, look, there's more monks in here. I love them. I've got this. Hello, child. Shall we continue your lessons? I love that my character is like a couple more old men in green robes. I got this. I've been told to advise you in negotiating with merchants, innkeepers, tavern owners, and the like. Is there anything I can tell you of such things? Tell me how to buy and sell. On a store screen, items for sale are listed on the left. Your own inventory is on the right. To buy and sell an item, select its name in the list. Selected item icons are highlighted. To purchase selected items, select the Buy button. If you can't afford everything, this button will be disabled. To sell inventory items, select Sell. Most stores mark up prices on merchandise. If you sell something, you won't be able to buy it back for the same price. What more would you like to know about how to turn your gold into something more practical? Um, wow, this music is good. Listen to this. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> All right, great. Oh, look at this. We're like in New Orleans. Teach me about renting a room. When you're in a town, you won't be able to sleep in the street. Instead, find an inn with rooms available. Select a room from the options shown and the rent button to have your party rest there. Okay. The more luxurious the room, the more hit points your party will recover resting in it. But even the sparsest accommodations are superior to the forest floor. All right, how about listen to rumors? If you want to listen to people talk, you'll need to drink with them. Choose the beverage of your choice from the list, select buy, and listen. Really? Oh my god. Not everyone will say something worth hearing, but occasionally you might hear some tidbit that will turn into a quest you can complete. What more would you like? I don't need to know anything else. Very well. Should you change your mind, I'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another tutor. Hello, child. I've been Shall asked to teach you some of, some of the more advanced principles of movement. Is there anything you'd like to know? <laughs> uh, we don't need to know any of this. We've pretty much figured this out in the tutorial. Oh, how do I travel between areas on the world map? That's important. 
To leave the area you're in, select the ground at the map's edge, if you can reach it. The world map screen will appear, showing you all the locations you can travel to. Select your destination's icon on the map, then travel. Is there any more uh, information I can give you regarding movement related, but nothing right now? As you like. Return to me if you need further instruction. Okay, fire bead elven hair. What's up? It's a hard to find decent folk nowadays. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> ah yes, I'm back within the hollowed holes of Candle Keep. With this iron crisis upon us, the trip from Bear Ghost was more hazardous than I, de than I care to relate. You're Gore Iron's ward, aren't you? My, you have come into your own. If you would permit an old man jealous of youth to say so. You old sick pervert! I smack and throw him into the mantle. Hmm. I left an identity scroll with Tethoril in the inner grounds. He should... Oh no, he's becoming like he's from Louisiana. It's the... It's the in music. <laughs> God. He should be done examining it by now. So if you could fetch it for me, I'd be grateful. Okay. Oh. Let's read this one. <laughs> I'm having a blast already. <laughs> Firebead Elven Hair. An old mage who makes the occasional visit here from Baragos, Bar Bar Baragost, has left an identify scroll with Testoril in the inner grounds. I swear, without me to run its endless errands, this keep would crumble into the very dust from which it sprang. Oh my gosh, you're telling me, sister. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's get over here. Let's talk to Winthrop. Hey. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we might have to stop doing voices at some point. We might have to stop. <laughs> Maybe this was bad. Maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> well, hello there, young one. <laughs> oh no. Come to visit your old pal Winthrop, have you? Well, don't forget the 10,000 gold piece book entrance fee, as per Candlekeep's custom, don't you know? <laughs> that is outrageous. What kind of a fool do you take me for? Stuff your inn and stuff your company. Damn. Okay, I like that. You were always the big kidder, Winthrop. That gets funnier nearly, uh, very nearly every time I hear it. Well, perhaps not quite so often. I fear I do not have that kind of entry fee with me. I suppose I shall return when I do. Stuff you're in and stuff your company, you bald asshole. <laughs> Ever the humorless brat you always were. It's but for the reputation of your father that I gave you endless chances to redeem your manner. I'll tolerate you here today, but bother me not. Fuck me. Oh, dear God, we cannot do this the whole way through, can we? <laughs> oh, it's locked. Okay, and I don't have thieving abilities. I'm a fool. Can I smash the shit out of it? Are people going to notice if I do that? You, su you have successfully forced the lock open. Look, see? I've heard some stuff about this game. This wasn't even in the fucking tutorial. All right, is there a take-all? Oh, there is. They didn't teach me that in the fucking tutorial. Okay. Oh, noble man, noble woman. You thinking this? Is this stealing? Am I? Will I know if I'm stealing? Mm -hmm. No time to chit chat. You step up to the heat, young one. You'll need a good fire to warm the chill stairs of those monks. Most inhospitable they are. Isn't that so, lovey? I don't even know how, how she sounds. Oh, yes, darling. They are most standoffish. They lead a somewhat cloistered life here, so they are unaccustomed to many visitors. You are perhaps a bit colorful compared to what they are used to. 
Watch your tongue. This was my home for a good part of my life, and I'll not have you sliding them in their own keep. I kind of want to come down hard on the noble people. Oh, I would not let it concern you, milady. Perhaps they are not used to wealth such as yours. You are quite wealthy, are you not? Bring a lot of expensive jewelry with you? Oh, I see. Perhaps they have not been as welcoming as they could have, but you are strangers in their home. Now let's go with this. Watch your tongue. Shut the fuck up. Well, at least the monks were quiet in their condemnation. <laughs> How did this guy sound again? Indeed, Lavi. You may have lived here, Lila Schnub, but from your tone, I wager you've forgotten much of the tact they should have taught. Leave us, please. Okay. Assholes. I see. All right. Over here. Should we go up? Should we go up top? See what's on the top floor? Hell yeah, we should. Okay. I've got this. Let's see. Let's scout around first. How's my map work? Oh. Area map background. Oh. Oh my. What? Are these just like areas my character can walk in? I think so. Okay. I understand. Or areas at least I can walk to and click in. Yeah. Yeah, see, it changes my icon. Okay. Good. Is there anyone up here before I just... Ooh, Sleeping Dwarf. Well, we'll take shit before we wake Sleeping Dwarf. Oh, a nobleman. Up here. This way. Another nobleman. Okay. Let's do a quick save. Ooh, it's locked. Okay. Boom. I failed to force it open. I try again. I try again. I try again. I fist. It's locked. I try again. Okay. It did not work. <laughs> do I only need to try once? Is it rolling the dice every time? I have no idea. Sleeping dwarf. I'm taking your stuff. I've successfully forced it open. Potion of Clarity. What does that do? This potion will maintain clarity and order from encroaching chaos and insanity. After drinking this potion, the imbiber feels an overwhelming sensation of calm and purpose, such that she will be unaffected by threatening influences like feeble mind, confusion, fear, and charm. This feeling will last for one hour, or until dispelled. <laughs> Don't take three <laughs> within within a 24-hour period. Good lord. There we go. Let's see over here. It's locked. Let's bust it. I did it. Okay. A silver necklace. A necklace is a piece of ornamental metal jewelry, usually made of silver, gold, platinum, or other precious metal, and adorned with gems. A necklace is always worn on the neck and can be of any length. All right. Let's see. Oh, there's a sleeping man in here. Okay. Hey. Uh, I can't rob him, can I? Special actions. What is this? Enrage. Oh, does this make me lose control? Huh. Plus two to our attack and damage rolls while enraged. Immune to charm, confusion, fear, feeble mind, hold, imprisonment, level drain, maze, stun, and sleep. Also, 15 temporary HP. Okay. Yeah, we're still allowed to do stuff. Okay, so Berserk is going to be, like, our ace in the hole. I believe that's one of the things that people said were super useful for, like, newcomers to the game. Was being able to be render yourself immune to a lot of those crowd control effects. Alright, anything in here? Hey, Don't nobleman. Don't touch me! I might catch something. <laughs> yes, might I help you? Sorry to have dis disturbed you. Wrong room, I fear. My apologies. I've been knee-deep in the tomes of the keep all day, and I am quite the fog as a result. Yes, indeed, you might help me to your valuables. I was just wondering who else was sharing the inn with me tonight. Who might you be? Yeah, I'm not going to rob them in broad daylight. <laughs> right? I'll rob them in the, in the cloak of night. There we go. Who are you? I might very well be anyone, but I am... Christian of Waterdeep. Likely you would not know my family name or history, and this suits me well and good. 
These trips to Candle Keep are a bit of an extravagance on my part. And while I neither use illicit substance, what a thing to say! Why would he bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> and while I neither use illicit substances nor concert with hired company, I spend quite enough time, quite enough here, that I should not like it common knowledge. To this end, I should appreciate it if you would forego your odd little attempt at introductions and leave me to my thoughts. Okay, what an asshole. Wasn't there another nobleman or something? Let's see, there you are. Hey. Away with you, beggar! <laughs> what? I certainly hope there is an explanation for this intrusion. Explain yourself. My apologies. I must have got the room numbers mixed about. Dreadfully sorry. A simple mistake. And no cause for excitement, so watch your words, or I'll be forced to feed them to you. <laughs> oh, shit. Explain myself. You are some pompous noble, and I'm here to take your belongings. Straightforward enough? Just getting to know the neighbors. Who might you be? My name is Quincy. Beyond that is my own business and none of your concern. Leave lest I report this intrusion to the guard. Okay, shit. Yeah, I don't know how the crime system works, but I would rather not get in deep doo-doo here in the opening. <laughs> All right. Weirdly, that wasn't in the tutorial. All right. Holy shit. Well, you know what? I think that makes for a good first one. Like I said, the first few of these, especially while we're still playing Cyberpunk, they will be fairly short, right? But so far, Baldur's Gate 1, I'm really enjoying it. It's been quite the riot, huh? I don't know. It's a little goofy. It's so fun to look back at uh, where everything has kind of begun, right? So many countless games have taken inspiration and, like I said, built off the back of the groundwork laid by Baldur's Gate. It's cool to, like in our own way sort of pay respect to it and enjoy it right it's such a such a classic right and they they got the third one coming out which i don't know how or however not it it continues the story or there's recurring characters or locations and stuff but nonetheless i definitely want to eventually get through this and the sequel right and very likely the threequel all right until next time please take care of each other